everybody, it's Chris at Spoiling Action. If you're a musician, a DJ, sound engineer or music producer, if you want to practice with your band or even record your material, also if you want to record your own voice clearly for your YouTube clips, no matter if you're a professional or an ambitious hobbyist, at some point you want to inform yourself about the topic sound or noise damping. This podcast is all about finding a frugal and affordable solution and I found seven different points that I want to discuss about. Personally, I'm highly interested to this for my upcoming band's practice room that also should act as a studio. So enough introduction, let's go! The first idea that I had was a very common one that most musicians think about first when it comes to a proper professional solution, I guess. So it was all about sound damping tiles made from an acoustic protection foam. Even if you're not a musician, you probably have seen pictures or video clips of your favorite artists in a singer's cabin where all those pyramids hanging on the walls in a regular pattern. I'm not a professional sound engineer as you might know, but what I can tell is, in general, a plain surface always got a potential to reflect sound waves. And this pyramid shape reflects the sound waves in multiple directions so that it stops the delay in your practice room. Usually those tiles are also not inflammable, which increases safety. Surely a decent, but I would say a very expensive solution. So let's get some alternatives. Timber. The second way could be wood. You notice, you get yourself a new apartment, it's empty, you clap in your hands and boom! Prime example for reverb and delay, huh? But after you build your first wooden shelf and put in a table or a chair, this effect gets more and more lost. So in some professional studios, they have wooden boards at their walls. Therefore, they use their boards cut it into shorter pieces and arrange them in a way that increases the wall's surface. That brings the same effect and the foam pyramids, it spreads the waves. Pro, it's solid, no stinky chemical softeners like in the foam, and all in all a natural product. Cons. I would say that you need thicker wood for this method, and it could be more expensive as the tiles. Also, the installation is a huge amount of work, which is actually no problem for me to handle, but yeah, the suboptimal price benefit relation in this case. Styrofoam. Styrofoam boards are cheap to get in average building centers. Actually, unlike the two first points, I'm not that sure if the effect is high enough by using styrofoam boards, but theoretically it could work. Maybe the damping effect gets higher the thicker the boards are and maybe it's easier to fix it at a ceiling than a heavy wood construction and uh, so if it ever falls down it doesn't smash the entire band into mesh. So it's cheap, light, relatively handy to install I would say. Uh, the surface is a little uneven but here we got a problem, a little. Uh, compared to the pyramids the sound spreading could be lower on top of that, the stuff might burn as hell if it's a cheap product. Egg boxes made from cardboard. The boxes where eggs are packed in are a good old school solution for sound damping in a practice room. They already have this pyramid shape. They are cheaper than professional form tiles, but unless you don't like to eat scrambled eggs and pancakes all the time, you need to have a good connection to get this huge amount for free. Some musician friends of mine were not that excited about their old practice room that was covered completely in egg boxes. Their impression was that it doesn't bring that much, but maybe you, the listener, knows more. Let me know. Mineral or glass wool. Okay, it's thick and relatively inexpensive. At first I have to say that I hate this stuff, because it seems that I react allergic to it. Those microfibers coming from the wool are very bad for your health if you inhale them. That's why you need to pack them in foil first. 
I surely know that this is no option for me, but I've seen tutorials here on YouTube showing how to make cheap bass rolls from those. Also I've seen that people use this stuff on their practice room's walls. However, if you know a way to use this material for successful sound damping, so the comment section is yours. Carpets Well-known good old way to banish unwanted delay and rework. There are two kinds of carpets. I'm thinking about carpeted floor that comes from those huge roads in your local building center. Remember, we want that material at our walls and, if possible, under the ceiling. When it comes to a carpeted floor, it's a difficult question because the thinner material is affordable indeed. But you know, the thicker carpet floor has got a very much deeper effect um, to the room sound. Unlike the pyramids, the stuff is vacuum cleanable, even at the walls. On the other hand, it could bring a lot more dust into your studio environment than the pyramid tiles, for example. Another pro could be a psychological effect. You can easily choose a color. I prefer blue practices rooms, if I have the choice. Uh, my old band's room was blue, and one of our neighbor band um, was in an aggressive red. And I played in both rooms and I can tell you, it was very much more relaxed in ours. The setting affects your mood and your mood is essential, especially if you are creative and write your own songs. So that's my opinion about carpets. Frames. An inexpensive and efficient way I think a wood frames stringed by a thicker cotton. Also, here the colors are up to you, which brings you the same benefit as carpeted floor at your walls. The wood can be the cheapest clipboard that you can find. You're not going to see its texture when it's covered by the cotton. You can choose the frame size so that it works perfectly in your particular practice room or studio situation. In addition, you choose where in your room you fix those frames. Also, they could easily combined with other sound damping concepts. I was in a bunker room by a band about a year ago. It had blank, naked concrete walls and no carpeted floor. Then the band put in some carpets on the floor and about one or two dozen of those frames. Et voila, perfect sounding. Uh, I see this solution more and more often. Maybe you were in a music room with such frames on the walls before too. Let me know. Okay, everybody, those were seven ideas to damp the sound in your practice room or studio. Before we get to a new little composing experiment of mine, and today's common question of the day, I want to thank all of you who joined the last common question of the day. In the previous podcast episode, I asked you about your favorite meals. For those of you that are new around here, Bonding Action is about composing music and composing yummy recipes. As I told you before, it will take a while until the first dishes are going to be uploaded, but in the meantime, I'm collecting ideas for meals. And your offerings in the comments of the last podcast are going to get on my agenda. Notice that it could take a while, but I'm not gonna forget it. Okay, let's start. Rabenprinz777, Stroganoff. Beef Stroganoff, a decent idea, a braising dish, nice, affordable ingredients because it transforms chewy meat parts into a tender result. I very much like this classic meal and definitely gonna give it a try. Next is Romeo Biles. My favorite meal is tortillas. Arriba! <laughs> a dish from Mexico that I personally have never eaten before. <laughs> yeah, but I like challenges. I've seen many cooking tutorials before and this dish is something that I need to try. Here in Germany we cannot find this that much often as in the USA for example, but I'm gonna make inquiries for more tutorials and try to find a local Mexican restaurant to have a, you know, taste reference of some kind. Um, a very yummy idea by you, Romeo, that now stands on my list. Thank you, I'm glad to implement this. Vampire Lady Liz. My favorite meal is macaroni with tomato sauce, as it makes my mother. Great video. Thank you, so macaroni with tomato sauce. 
Uh, in the following comment thread you just gave me some details. Everyone loves pasta and I don't want to miss to give your mother's recipe a stage. I'm gonna ask you in the next days for some more details to make it as close and authentic to your mother's original so as possible. Nice idea. And finally, real MSH82. I love Bratwurst with crowds. <laughs> A real German classic. So Bratwurst with sauerkraut, huh? It's definitely something that I'm very familiar with and it's tasty. So I personally prefer sauerkraut with a German meat delicacy called Kassler. Um, but Bratwurst always works with some sauerkraut. And this is probably a good choice to spread some culinary knowledge about my home country to the world. And so right on your screens. Thank you all for your ideas. As I said, I'm going to make cooking videos from these. Be informed that it could take a while, so don't worry. Um, but in the meantime, I'm going to make more video podcasts and little music videos that I call music snippets to show you people some in-progress compositions and sound experiments. And because today's podcast is all about sound damping ideas, I asked you about your opinions. No matter if you're a musician or not, the common question of the day is how would you damn the sound or noise in a band, practice room or music studio? As last time, bond your fingers to your keyboard, join the discussion and I'm going to show up your ideas in the next podcast episode. So, and as last time, now for the sugar on top, I made this strange sounding guitar clip about a week ago or so and now I've added an African djembe drum and a lead guitar to it. See you then, later!